Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So here I'll be going through a complete topic walkthrough on differentiation and how to deal with it, use it and work with it through the exam. So namely, I'll be going through four exam problems, which are three by Ed Excel, so the exam papers and one I just made up. So differentiation not only covers um, maths, but it goes into deeper levels of engineering, physics and all that kind of related field. So yeah, I really recommend I really learn this because once you do A levels, you're going to do a lot of differentiation. So this is going to be a major topic. Okay. But anyways, without further ado, let's jump in now to the first exam problem. So the curve C has equation Y equals 1 over 3X cubed minus 9X plus 1. Find DY over DX. Okay. If you guys never seen this before, this is known as the gradient expression. So an equation used to represent a gradient. And the way to find this uh, dy of dx, this means you have to differentiate the y expression in, or with respect to x. So let's have a look here. We're going to just do it in a very quick and easy way. So all you have to do is basically look at term by term. Yeah. So we look at x cubed. So with x cubed, the, the process is, is that you subtract the power by 1 and this becomes x squared. And with that power, you drop it to the ground. So drop the 3. So it'd be 3 times the third, which is 1. And minus in the power by one, you get two. So x power two. If it, if it's nine, if it's x, because it's, there's only one power left, if you subtract it, you get zero. So it vanishes. And with that one, you drop it to the ground. So one times nine is nine. If you have a constant plus one, it just vanishes. It becomes zero because there's no x terms. So you can't differentiate nothing with respect to x there. And that's it. You're done. And this is literally all you do. Now let's look at part b. Find the range of values of x for which c has a negative gradient. So when the gradient expression here mm. is negative, what this means is that you have to set this equation x squared minus 9 and make it less than 0. So we're going to find the values of x, which makes this equation less than 0. Now, because this is a quadratic, or actually because it's a difference of two square numbers, you've got two square terms, x squared minus 9, we could use the double bracket method. So when you've got something squared minus another squared you can square root both of them and put it here so it's square root x squared is x and x square root of 9 is plus minus 3 so plus 3 minus 3 and of course less than 0 now you just have to find which values of x between these critical values that makes this less than 0 so what I would do so first things first let's say so we can say that the critical values are when x equals minus 3 or x equals plus three so these are solutions of the quadratic and all you guys want to do is literally draw a straight line like a number line on the x-axis and because you know this is a quadratic equation so it's a u-shape and it cuts something like that at x equals minus three and plus three we can see that below the curve it's going to be around here so this is when it dips below the curve so when the curve dips below the line sorry and we can see clearly that's between the values of minus three and three and we found it. So we can say that this, the range of values of x has to be between minus 3 and plus 3. So a curve C has equation given as follows. Find dy of dx. This is what you get. So to differentiate, all you do is look at the power and drop it on the ground. So x to the power 3 becomes 3x. And then you subtract the power by 1. So 3 take away 1 is 2. For the second term, you drop the power 2 in front. So you get 2 x subtract 2 by 1 and you get 1 so just 2x to the power of 1 which you can leave like 2x next one is 8x now if you imagine for 8x you've got a power of 1 here yeah? if you drop the 1 down it'd be 1 times 8 which is 8 and then you're left with 0 now anything to the power of 0 is actually 1 and then you basically got 8 times 1 which is 8 or a nice way to memorize it is that if you got if you left with the, uh, the term x it always vanishes when you differentiate and now next last bit, when you differentiate a constant, because there's no x attached, it's going to be zero. That vanishes. So you're left with basically this equation here. Okay, part B. So the curve C has two turning points. <clears throat> and the curve C is this one here. Work out the x coordinates of the two turning points. Okay, so a turning point is literally when the graph turns. <laughs> as simple as that. Because we've got a cubic graph, and it's cubed because um, the highest power is 3. It looks a bit like this. So the graph looks a bit like that, something like that. We don't know how exactly, but like that. And we know it turns at two points. 
some point here and some point here. Now, one interesting thing about this and how it links to dy dx is that when you have a turning point, this means that at this point exactly, we can see that the gradient is actually flat, is zero. And dy dx is literally the gradient expression. So we say, all right, at these two points, we must have a dy over dx equal to zero, a flat gradient. So all that essentially means is that you equate your dy dx equation over here to zero and solve it like you would for a normal quadratic equation. And that's it guys, that's literally all you do. So solving this quadratic equation, I mean, we just use the standard quadratic formula. So let me change the color pen. We're going to have x equals, so minus b, so b, actually let me write the whole thing, minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And therefore x is going to equal, so minus b, so b is negative 2, so it'll be plus 2, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is minus 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4 times a, which is 3, times minus 8, which is c, over 2 times a, so 2 times 3. That's it guys, and when you put this into your calculator, or if you use a calculator that can solve quadratics, you should get two solutions. One of them being um, x equals 2, and the other one being x equals minus 4 over 3. And that's really it. These are your two x coordinates. So we can say that one of the turning points was here, which is probably x equals 2, and this one here, which is probably x equals minus 4 over 3. If this was x, if this was the, the graph, x, y axis. Anyway, let's do part C. Show that the x axis is a tangent to curve C. Okay, what it's trying to say here is that if you plot this on um, a graph, let's just visualize for a second. It could be one of two scenarios. We have a turning point which occurs somewhere and it probably bounces at some line. Let's say it bounced here. Or it could have been like this. One of the x coordinates probably bounced here and then went up. Now, a tangent is when you hit something at exactly one point. In other words, we're, we're treating the x axis as the tangent itself. So we're going to test whether one of these x coordinates will give you a y coordinate zero. So oh yeah, sorry, quick recap. When you get to, to prove something is a tangent to the x axis, we need to show that it bounces on x axis. And if it touches the x axis, that automatically means that the y coordinate is zero because it's on the x axis. It's, it's right over here or right over here, which is also y equals zero. Anyway, let's plug in one, both of these coordinates here. Yeah? We're going to plug into the curve uh, of y, which is over here. So we're going to say, all right, at x equals 2, if you plug it in, it will be, for, for example, 2 cubed minus 2 squared minus 8 times 2 plus 12. And if you did that, you'll get y equals 0. And yet, yeah, actually, this is, <laughs> this is your solution. If you get 2, if you get 0 as a y coordinate, it means that you're on the x-axis. However, if you plug in the other x value, which was what? Minus 4 over 3. If you plug this into this equation, you actually end up with a result of something like do 500 over 27 nope and this is clearly not on the on the x-axis because it's all the way above somewhere and that's it guys that's literally all they want so your solution would actually be when x equals 2 y is 0 so that is the x coordinate they want x equals 2 y equals 0 now and that's really it so find dy of dx now if you guys are pretty comfortable with differentiation the whole point is, the whole rule is that you just have to see if there's an x, and, and there is, see if there's a power. So if it says x to the power 3, you draw the power 3 down, so it becomes 3x, and subtract the power by 1, so 3 becomes 2. And that's it. Next one, so we look at 2x squared, draw the power 2, so you got 2 times 2 is 4, subtract the x power by 1, and you got 1, so it's just 4x. Now if you're left with just an x, you, literally the x vanishes, so you got minus 15. If there's a constant, well, that disappears. So that becomes 0. And that's it. That's your equation. So that's 3x squared minus 4x minus 15. Now, let's move on to the next bit. So C is the curve with equation this, the same one from above. Work out the range of values for which the curve has a negative gradient. Now, the whole point of dy dx is that this is an equation for the gradient expression. Yeah? So this is known as the gradient expression. Okay, this is something that needs to be fundamental. Yeah, we, we just got to know this, yeah? So it's telling us that we need to find some values of x which makes this negative. So the only way something is negative if all of this is less than 0, right? So that's it. We just write that equation. So, so we say that dy dx, which is known to be this, has to be less than 0. Now, this is literally 
it not too difficult because this is a quadratic equation. So what I would personally do, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna factorize. I'm gonna go ahead and just smash this in the quadratic formula. So if you're not too sure what the quadratic formula is, we're given we're given it right at the back here. Yeah? So it's actually it's actually given. So it's minus b plus minus the square root of all of these lot. And the solutions are and it's given in this form. So you need the a which is in front of x squared, the bx, and it's plus c. And we got it. So going back to the question, so duh, 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 right here. So we got our value. So we got a which is three b which is negative 4 and c which is negative 15 so i'm going to go ahead and put this in the formula yeah so minus b is going to be b minus b plus minus b squared so be 16 minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a okay so have a go putting on your calculator guys yeah the point of this is that these are going to give you those those important critical values yeah and then we're going to see what to do next to them okay so minus 15 over 2 times 3 so one of the solutions is a 3 so x is the critical at 3 and the other one well if it's a minus sign you're going to get x being min x equal minus 5 over 3 so these are the critical points but they want us to find the range of values yeah so because it's less than zero we need to just basically plug in yeah now the key idea is is that i use this table true false method so I draw a number line with two points, the smaller number here and the bigger number here. And all I do is say if it's middle, if the values in between is true, that means the range will be between. If it's false, that means the range will be outer. So we're going to see if it's inner or outer, yeah. And all you do is pick a value between minus five, three, and three. So I'm going to pick when x is zero, yeah. I want to see what happens when x is 0, if I plug in 0 into this equation here, do I get a value less than 0? Well, let's see. So I put 0 here, we've got, we're going to have 0, minus 4 times 0 is 0, minus 15. And well, minus 15 is less than 0, so it's true. So this part is true, meaning that the solutions are going to be inner, so it'll be between. Now I know this because if I, if I put a value less than minus 5 or 3, or bigger than 3, like 10, they'll be false, okay? I just know because if you, you can test it and you'll get the result but bottom line is just check the middle if it's true then it's inner if it's false then it's outer and that's it so that means the solution is going to be x is going to be between the inner results minus 5 3 and okay and here we go the last problem so the displacement s meters of an object from a fixed point after t seconds is given by the following displacement equation okay so a what is the velocity of the object after four seconds now key thing to know here when you got the keywords such as displacement velocity in seconds we're dealing exclusively with a chain of differentiation yeah this is in the context of maths so if i want to go from if i want to find the velocity i need to firstly differentiate the displacement equation so it'll be ds over dt okay what this means you look at the s equation and you just differentiate to get velocity so this will be the velocity equation. So differentiating, you're going to get, dropping the 3 down, uh, 3 times 3, which is 9t. Subtract the power by 1, so it will be power 2. Next one, drop the power 2 down, so it will be 5 times 2, which is 10t. Subtract the power by 1, you're going to get t to the power 1, or just t. And lastly, uh, differentiating a constant will give you 0. So every time you differentiate a constant, it's always locked at 0. So that's cool. So that's done. Now all you want to do is literally substitute the value of um, t, of which is 4, because t is a time variable and it says 4 seconds. So here they want us to, to know what the velocity would be, which would be 9 times 4 squared minus 10 times 4. And when you guys do this, you should get an answer of roughly or exactly 104 meters per second. So remember, because, it's, because velocity is a, a speed component, or well, it's actually a vector, uh, it's always going to be per second. Okay. Now, part B. After how many seconds was the acceleration of the object zero? Okay, keyword here is acceleration. Now, just like how you went from displacement velocity, to go from velocity to acceleration, we need to differentiate the velocity equation. So we can say dv over dt is equal to the acceleration. Now, find acceleration, just differentiate 9t squared minus 10t. So using the same idea, 
we drop the power down so 9 times 2 is uh, 18 and then t subtract the power by 1 you get 1 so it's just t now when you have when you have just one variable left if you have just a exact t or x if you differentiate this it will just vanish so it'll be minus 10 and that's it guys that's literally it now it says here that we need to figure out how many seconds was the acceleration of the object at zero in other words we need to make the acceleration equation equal to zero now solving this one you're gonna have 18t minus 10 is zero adding 10 across you have 18t equals 10 and lastly dividing t you can get 10 over 18 and now because this is um, a time-based question it's always good to try and put it into decimal format so you can get about uh, five ninths of a second which is approximately to let's say two decimal places 0 0.56 seconds and that's it guys this is literally um, all done